Vogue. <laughs> so today I have an announcement to make. I have a new catchphrase. Vogue. And it's only because my teenage daughter so wants me to use that word more often. And so I thought I'd make it a catchphrase anyways. Scarlet here, Vogan out. And I had a question today about this poster behind me. What the fuck is all this then? Let me explain it. So I know a few of you know quite a bit more about astrology than I do. But there's a few of you that have no earthly idea what this is. I want to kind of explain that to you today. Why does it look familiar? If you notice, it's a circle in 12 sections. Where else can we think of an instance that we see a circle that has 12 segments? Clocks. Right. So time is kept this way. So if you think about this as a clock, this is your zodiac wheel so um it's an astrological clock if you will but if there's many ways to interpret time in this instance we're talking about archetypes this is something that i've studied quite a bit i have a master's and a bachelor's degree in classics i try to tie in the ancient kind of archetypes and the mythology into it but if you look here you can see the 12 segments and that comes from the ancient Sumerians. Sumer is a place that I will get to in another video. I think that it's worth talking about many biblical stories. I don't think people really realize that you know the flood and um, the Enuma Elish is the creation myth and there's a lot of um, similar stories that are, have different characters with different names but it's the exact same stories. The ancient Sumerians, they divided time into 12 months. And so here we go. We've got a 12. They liked the 12 month or the 12 division of time. Also in a clock, we have 12 and 12, right? 24 hours in a day. But notice it's all divided in increments of 12. That's what's going on here is there's a 12 segmented circle. And that is essentially a clock. It's like a calendar. Each planet, the ancients um, thought of seven planets. The Sumerians, again, thought of that. There's seven days in a week. And actually, Julius Caesar is the one that decided to divide time as such. But um, technically. But the Sumerians really originated these ideas. If you look at this clock and you pretend that it's... Um, a person's body from head to toe. I like to use the analogy of a color wheel and a color line because time can be appear to be linear but you can also look at it in a circular way and if you look at it from a different perspective you um, can see that it revolves around. Um, there's not really like a beginning, a middle, and an end so much as there is um, cycles. And so this is a 12 segmented circle representing um, where all of the constellations, the 12 constellations, each representing a portion of the human body as well as a characteristics of the human psyche. Humans are very multifaceted and multidimensional and none of us are the same. And just because you have your son in cancer and someone else has their son in cancer does not mean that you will act the exact same. There's much more to it than that. So I agree with those of you um, who naysay astrology and um, think that there's nothing to it. Um, if you're looking at it through, you know, if you're reading a newspaper um, article about astrology, and you just read it based on your sun sign. You're not really looking at the big scheme or the big picture. And that's what this is. So if you take a snapshot of the sky, many of us uh, don't really look at the stars and the heavens and the sky anymore. But if you were to stop time and take a snapshot of the stars, you would see that the constellations is what's going on here. This particular poster has it rotating the wrong way, but that's fine. Um, Capricorn is right here, and that would be the constellation that was rising on the eastern horizon at the time of your birth if your birth chart has an ascendant of Capricorn. So mine happens to be a Capricorn ascendant. So you would start with Capricorn here, um, and then actually technically we go counterclockwise in astrology is how we read astrology. The Western people want to go 
uh, clockwise. So this one has the constellations ordered this direction, but in actuality, it should be going this way. Everything's backwards in a, in a natal chart or in a zodiac wheel. Uh, you have the eastern and western are just flipped from what you would typically think on a map and the northern and southern. So, for example, this part up here is the southern horizon, and then this part right here would be the northern horizon, okay? And then this is east, and this is west. It's a little bit backwards from, uh, it's a matter of your perspective is how you see time, right? That's what the zodiac wheel is, and if you take the planets that um, all we all are familiar with, the ancients recognized seven of them, the Sumerians, again, um, had seven planets, and that's gonna be the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, um, the Earth or Terra, uh, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Um, Pluto is kind of, you know, obviously we don't count Earth, you know, because we're on it. Um, and then Pluto, we do look at Pluto aspects in astrology. The ancients weren't so much interested in Pluto. However, we do have asteroids and things that we'll talk about that later. So, if you take all of the planets, um, they're all go rotating in different orbits. And so that creates um, different arrangements of planets. You can have your Mercury, one person will have their Mercury over here in Capricorn, another person will have it over here in Cancer. Um, you'll have it in different spots. And it's the relationship of the planets, the houses in which they fall, and um, almost like their conversation with one another. When I look at a birth chart, I'm looking at many things, but mainly I'm, you know, I'm seeing where all your planets, if you take a snapshot of the second you're born, where, where are all your planets? Are they all in this house? How do they talk to each other? There's much more to a birth chart than um, just your son. You, you really need to look at much, much deeper than that. And also you can, um, look at your transits. So if I were to overlay the snapshot of today's current snapshot of the constellations and the planets and their conversation, if I overlay that onto your natal chart, then I can see how things will push and pull and affect you. This is nothing etched in stone because let me remind everyone that you have free will, <laughs> okay? So I'm never gonna tell you that um, because your planets fall this way, you're definitely gonna behave such or such a way. You have free will. What I'm saying is that you should take a look at um, astrology to better understand your own psyche. Um, and other people as well. I can also um, overlay your birth chart with your partner's birth chart and see the conversation that your planets have with one, one another. And that can um, tell you many things about your relationship with that person. Sometimes you may just not click with a person and it's not that one sign or one planet is good or bad. It's the resonance or dissonance that they hold with each other that can be harmonic or disharmonic, if that makes sense. So I want you to just um, take a look at the zodiac wheel, familiarize yourself with it. These are the constellations. Um, they're always gonna be in the same order from Aries to the head to Pisces to the feet. And then they're broken up into 12 houses and each house has a characteristic of the home constellation, for example, um, but I'll get into that later. So this is just a zodiac wheel. It's very much like a clock and much like our modern clock that all of us use, um, the Gregorian way that we tell time. It's based on more ancient methods of telling time. I just want everyone to familiarize themselves. There's, you know, of course there's the Vedic astrology that is very interesting to me. And they, when you're looking at their chart, they do it in <laughs> squares and triangles, but it's basically, from what I can see, the same 12 house structure. Uh, they just don't use circles, you know, I think. 
<laughs> they're more geometric than we are in some, you know, ways. But the Vedic um, astrology um, is very detailed as well. So, but very, very similar to the Western style of astrology. And in fact, we owe much of our understanding of um, the Zodiac to the East. So, um, can't be understated. And also, let's go back to ancient Sumer and revisit that in a different video. I look forward to doing that with you next. So, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you later. Vogue.